Tell us a little bit about that moment when the results came in. 117, uh, you amongst them, of course, saying they had uh, no confidence. Well, it's an extraordinary number. Uh, Downing Street, I understand, had been briefing it would be 70, and the Chancellor had said only extremists were voting against her. And it means that more than half of backbenchers must have voted against the Prime Minister because the payroll either has to resign or support her. So it was a much bigger number uh, than had earlier been anticipated. Some people hearing you say that and, and may have seen you on previous uh, news programs are thinking that, frankly, all you are is a sore loser. Uh, yeah. and, and you did lose. And why not fall in line, recognise, yeah. if you like, the democracy within your own party? I completely understand that. But in a normal election, half the voters aren't actually on your payroll. And that slightly changes Can the tone. Can you explain that for people? I've uh, heard the, that uh, phrase uh, a sorry, few times. Of course, yes. The payroll are ministers who are actually paid, get money for it, uh, um, parliamentary private secretaries who are unpaid, vice chairman of the Conservative Party, and trade ambassadors, all of whom lose their job if they don't support or have confidence in the You're prime minister. You're questioning their integrity? No, not at all. Uh, anyone who um, didn't uh, vote for the prime minister uh, who had one of those roles would have had to have resigned beforehand. So clearly they have confidence in her. So the issue is that the backbenchers, of the backbenchers, well over half voted against the Prime Minister. And if you look at previous Prime Ministerial resignations, if you look at Margaret Thatcher and at Ted Heath, they both won more votes but stood down because they recognised they were not commanding the support of their party. So th th this isn't an ordinary election and an ordinary uh, electorate. It's a very peculiar election. And that's why, if you look at the historical precedents, I still think the Prime Minister should resign because she clearly doesn't have the full confidence of Parliament. No um, leader of any party has ever had the full 100% confidence of the party. Um, there are many who voted against her who are now saying, we accept the result, we're going to move forward. You've been making mischief. When are you going to stop? Well, look, this is about a fundamental issue of how our country is going to be governed in future and whether we respect the result of the referendum. The issue came about because Theresa May's withdrawal agreement fails to deliver on Brexit and on her promises. It keeps us in the customs union potentially forever. And she's now and going back to Brussels and back to the EU nations to come back okay. with some sort of resolution to the issues that are a problem, namely the backstop. Well, she needs to remove the backstop entirely. But this problem would not have arisen had she not come back with a deal in the first place, which broke her own promises. She said we wouldn't be in the customs union. She said she wouldn't split Northern Ireland off from Great Britain. Both of these things happen within the backstop. So that's how the Prime Minister got into this position. And we're hearing the EU say they will not reopen the text. And protocols to the text are very weak. Bear in mind there's a protocol to the Lisbon Treaty that says the Charter of Fundamental Rights will not apply, and that turned out to be worthless. So unless the body of the text is changed, the law will not be changed. Can I ask you, uh, looking forward down, down the path, if we follow the logic of what you're saying, and she cannot get this, this her Brexit deal through Parliament, we go to no deal. Now, you may well stand here this morning and tell people that it won't be as bad as you think. I think it'll be OK and we'll get through it. We'll make preparations. And, but there'll be a lot of worried people, maybe in not the fortunate circumstances that you are or we are, who may well be really affected by that. What do you say to those people if you're one of those mm -hmm who are effectively responsible for us ending up in that position. Okay. Of course people will be concerned about something before it's happened and people worry about what is not known and that is perfectly reasonable and rational. I do not want no deal, I want to have some form of deal with the European Union and always have done. I think the problem in this negotiation, why the negotiation has been carried out so badly, is it's now become clear that when the Prime Minister said no deal is better than a bad deal, she had her fingers crossed. And therefore we haven't made the preparations that we should have made, and we haven't been robust in the negotiations. We need a much robuster tone in the negotiations. Can I just say, ask you that? I, I take the point course. you're making, but can I ask you, are you prepared, given what you've said about, and you know about people's anxieties, and if you don't, you should. Of course I do. Are you prepared to be part of a, a parliament or a government that takes people to a no deal? Whatever, wherever the blame lies. As a taxi driver said to me a couple of days ago, he didn't vote for a deal, he voted to leave the European Union. The key thing is that we leave the European Union, and that is not about deals, that is about restoring our own democratic control. Jacob Rees-Mogg, thank you it's very much. Thank, thank you. Time.